spectrum. Just as you need ground under your feet if you want to walk or water to swim, mobile networks require spectrum to operate. In the telecommunications industry, spectrum refers to specific ranges of frequencies that operators can legally use for their wireless networks. Mobile network operators typically buy spectrum at government auctions. As we were making this video, 5G spectrum was being auctioned in many countries. Mobile phone frequencies occupy a narrow range in the electromagnetic spectrum. The frequencies are relatively low, well below visible light. In its release 15, 3GPP grouped 5G radio frequencies into two ranges, FR1, where 5G operates in frequencies below 7.1 GHz, and FR2, higher frequencies that are new to mobile networks. FR1, the range of frequencies that 5G is first deployed at worldwide, further subdivides into two subbands, sub 3 GHz and 3 to 7.1 GHz. As a result, people talk about 5G being deployed in three frequency bands, the low band, the mid band, and the new FR2 high band. Let's talk about the low band first, the sub 3 GHz frequencies. In practice, the low band really includes frequencies below 1 GHz. The big advantage of the low band is that sub GHz radio waves can travel a long way and get around obstacles. This makes the low band suitable for rural coverage. In a low density area, one cell tower operating the low band can cover hundreds of square kilometers. The low band has a big downside, however. Even though sub gigahertz 5G offers rural users high quality broadband, the performance is a fraction of the 20 gigabits per second that 5G is supposed to be capable of. So that's for the low band. Let's skip the mid band for now and look at the other end of the range, the FR2 frequencies. Also called millimeter wave, high band 5G operates in frequencies ranging between 25 and 42 gigahertz and possibly higher in future Simultaneously. The main disadvantage of high band frequencies is the short range of about 1.5 kilometers out in the open. Radio signal emitted in millimeter wave frequencies also attenuates sharply when it encounters obstacles like windows, trees, or even falling snow. That makes the high band the mirror image of the low band. From an infrastructure point of view, FR2 frequencies will be covered by small cell sites mostly indoors. So what about the mid-band then? Also referred to as C-band, the mid-band is 5G's sweet spot. In the mid-band, 5G transmits a lot more data much faster than 4G. And 5G in that frequency range, roughly from 3 to 7 gigahertz, can cover longer distances while being much less affected by obstacles like walls or windows. Because it's a good compromise between the low band and the high band, the C-band is the frequency range which most operators are initially deploying their 5G networks. A notable exception is the US, where 5G initially became available in low and high bands. Over time, in a lot of countries, 5G will be deployed in all three bands. The high band will provide coverage in places like sports stadiums and airports, or any place that has a high density of users. Deployment scenarios like factories or hospitals that require the highest levels of performance will also use millimeter wave 5G. The C-band, meanwhile, will reach most users in city cores or residential neighborhoods. The low band, as we saw, is best for rural areas. All things equal, the more spectrum an operator has access to, the better the performance of its 5G network. The International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, has called for a minimum of 100 megahertz of contiguous bandwidth per operator. Operators in future will need a lot more than 100 megahertz of spectrum. According to the GSMA, the main industry association for mobile network operators, many cities will need two to three gigahertz of spectrum between one and seven gigahertz by 2030 to operate their mobile network smoothly. If that spectrum isn't available, operating cost and energy consumption will rise. Freeing that much spectrum won't be easy. 2G, 3G, and 4G networks already take up space in the sub-3 gigahertz range. 
In addition, some C-band frequencies were earlier assigned to other users, like satellite TV providers. Free and spectrum in the 1 to 7 GHz range will require migrating these incumbent users. As you can see, spectrum is valuable and in limited supply. Telecommunications authorities tend to sell spectrum to operators at auctions, where the highest bidder wins. Intuitively, this makes sense because the market is a great instrument for allocating scarce resources. But there are downsides to auctions. Operators that spend a lot of money on Spectrum may be forced to slow down the rollout of their 5G networks. That means that 5G's benefits to consumers and industry have to wait even longer. For this reason, regulators in some countries chose to allocate Spectrum at a low cost or even free of charge methodology in exchange for pledges from operators to deploy more quickly. In those countries where Spectrum is given away, Regulators look at wireless networks as essential infrastructure. They expect that the revenue lost from not auctioning off Spectrum will be made up for later through the taxation of new business activity that the availability of 5G will foster. Okay, that was a lot of content on Spectrum. I hope you learned something. In the next section, we will talk about the new technologies that make 5G possible.